welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. It is time for a recipe of the day. It is Tuesday, day I don't know what of shelter in place, but we're still here and we are doing our recipe of the day today. Welcome. Let's get started here. We are going to be making today something very yummy and exciting. We are back. And it is going to be Swedish meatballs. So I found a recipe that is just epically good for Swedish meatballs. And I was inspired to make these because I saw yesterday um, on the um, headlines that IKEA released their recipe for their Swedish meatballs. And people were going crazy. So um, we're going to make some Swedish meatballs. So I am excited to do this. I'm going to have to take my jewelry off because this is a dig it in the bowl kind of re recipe. My bling it on, Susan's ring, my yellow one, I'm so excited, my wedding ring off. doesn't come off often, but it comes off for meatloaf and meatballs. So I'm going to get started here. Hey, Rhonda, Jill, Teresa, welcome, ladies. Thank you for watching. We're going to make some meatballs, some meatballs. Hey, Florence, how are you? So I have a pound of pork going in. This is actually three, I'm going to make three times the recipe that I will post online because if I'm going to go to the trouble to make meatballs, I'm going to make plenty for more people than just us. <laughs> so I've got a pound of turkey and a pound of beef and a pound of pork going into the bowl here, going into the pool and then into the pool here I'm going to put one egg per pound of beef here. So let's get the eggs going in here. One. Wah! Shells aren't really good in this. I'll take that out. One. Hey, Florence. Nice to say hi to you. Already, how's it going? Rhonda, how's Escrow World today? We got our three eggs. I just put three eggs. I said that one egg per pound of meat. And then I'm going to put in here, the recipe calls for panko, but I always try to make them gluten-free if I can make a recipe gluten-free. So I, and I don't have panko in my pantry, but I do have cornmeal. So I'm going to do a quarter of a pound of cornmeal, quarter of a pound, quarter of a cup of cornmeal per pound of meat. So I have three quarters of a cup of cornmeal just went in. I have about three tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley. That's going in. Oh, it smells so good. I love fresh herbs. And then I have um, about mm, two or three cloves of fresh garlic because, you know, you always need some fresh garlic in my world. And we're going to go on here with um, our spices. Now this calls for, I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon of allspice. Let's get my teaspoon out here. And allspice half a teaspoon and then we're going to do half a teaspoon too of nutmeg so I think allspice and nutmeg they both go a long way so a little bit goes a long way here so half a teaspoon of each of those and I am going to put a little bit of garlic powder because I did use fresh garlic but I'm going to do half a teaspoon too of um, garlic powder and then I'm going to do just some salt and pepper here. So I'll take my salt. I have a helper here, it looks like. Some salt. Hey, Todd, how are you? Erica, my girl. Hey, Lisa. And see, I'm carefully measuring that salt. <laughs> Let's put some in. We got three pounds of meat in the bowl here, so we got to get some salt going in there. Now I'm going to do at least a teaspoon of this seasoned pepper, just because, you know, I love this Lowry seasoned pepper. And we're making Swedish meatballs today, guys. And there's not very much even left of this, so we're going to go probably two teaspoons there of the seasoned pepper and a little bit more because that's the end of the road on that one. <laughs> Make sure I got all my things in here that I need to before I stick my hands in there. So we've got our cornmeal, parsley, allspice, nutmeg, onion. Oh, the onion. So like you guys know, on onion, I like to grate my onion and normally I grate it on the board but for a recipe like this I um, want the liquid of the onion to keep my meat uh, uh, moist so I grated it into a bowl so that the liquid is there so grated onion one like medium size 
onion I grated because I don't like big chunks of onion in things like meatloaf or like sauces, sauces, things that are going to have a sauce. So I like to just grate the onion and then it goes away but you have the flavor. Um, and I think that's all we got going in there for this. I got it all in. Okay, into the pool we go. So we have a pound of pork and a pound of turkey and a pound of beef and three quarters of a cup of cornmeal and then our spices and some parsley and an onion grated and we are going to mix it up here into our meatball yumminess. <laughs> My mom made Swedish meatballs when I was a kid and I loved them. They were so good. And I had no idea, because the first time I think I made these, because my sister makes them and they're yummy. She'd make them for parties and stuff. Um, and But I had never made them because the recipe, I remember I made these. They're so good. But there. Have a little bit of butter in the sauce coming that makes them so yummy. Um, I made these in May 20th of 17 because my notes are on my recipe and it says DELISH in all caps. Then I always write my notes, the things that I did to change the recipe into how I made them because they were awesome. Okay, that is mixed. You don't want to over mix it because the meat gets tough. So hold on a second, let me wash my hands real quick and we are going to fry some meatballs. I know I'm Swedish too, Rhonda. Swedish and Irish. That's me. That's where I get my gloriously tanning skin. <laughs> oh. Okay. I get the meatball off my hands there, and we're going to fry these up here. Let's make some meatballs. And uh, put a little olive oil in our pan. Of course, using my favorite cast iron pan, the big mama, my big one, because I have several sizes for all your cast iron needs. Hey Lisa, how are you? Hey Katie, welcome. We're making Swedish meatballs. Swedish meatballs, I'm going to take them over here so you guys see me on Instagram. I move them. And I'm going to got the olive oil here in the pan. Oh, one thing about the big mama, it's hard to muscle it with one hand, but we are muscling it here. Okay, it's getting hot, because once this baby gets hot, it's hot! It's okay, I'm throwing these in here. I'm using a scoop so that the meatballs are uniform size, so they cook the same. Can you read me the comments there? I can't see them there. What did my sister say? She says, hey. Hey, okay, hey. I'm too far away on the screen to read your comments while I'm over here making meatballs. She said that her and her brother used to make at the shop the meatballs. They always sold out. Oh, yes. Well, I looked up too. Well, that's why I was, when I saw that Ikea had released their meatball recipe yesterday and it was like an internet sensation. It was like trending on Twitter. I thought, well, shoot, then let's make some meatballs because they are yummy, totally. I'm not going to make all these while you guys are there, but I'm going to make enough so that we can make the sauce, because, you know, the sauce is the yummy part, so we got to cook these first. So, yes, they are yummy. I don't know, did I miss, did I miss anything whole in my, in my, mix here? Uh, she said you can bake them in the oven way easier. Well yes I could bake them in the oven but then you guys couldn't watch me and we couldn't make the sauce live here. This is all that's going to fit I think in my big mama because I don't want to crowd my balls here. <laughs> you always got to have ballroom. Always got to have ballroom. <laughs> so we're going to let those go. We may end up cooking cooking a few more. So I've got this thing hot. So while we watch the grass grow here, let's chat. <laughs> Adele says hi. Let's see your her comment there. Hey Adele. And we are going to get our meatballs going hot here. 
So I thought, hey, Ed, how are you? Um, <laughs> so on the, on the headlines about the IKEA meat, meatballs yesterday, I just thought that was funny that people are missing their meatballs. And I didn't see how my recipe was actually different or the same as IKEA. But um, if you want to make IKEA meatballs, they released the recipe, just like Doubletree had released the chocolate chip cookies that we made. And boy, are they good. I have made them a few times since we launched that recipe here on Recipe of the Day. Um, I know. Well, I will make more, but once we are done with the making the sauce here. So then I thought another headline I saw yesterday, while well, I am always looking for ideas online for you guys for our easy recipes of the day. Hey, Seal, how are you? Was the 10 most Googled recipes since stay-at-home orders began. And this is dated yesterday. So this is current um, information on what people are Googling. So if you guys want to take some guesses on what's on the list here for the 10 most Googled recipes, and don't cheat. <laughs> I'm turn my balls here so I can smell them getting brown. Definitely, you can also do these for sure on a cookie sheet in the oven, and then you don't have to stand here and turn them. But then I wouldn't have any way to entertain you if I didn't have to stand here and turn them, right? <laughs> well, won't they get more brown in a pan than they would in the oven? Uh, I guess it depends how it costs the oven is, but I, I would think they'd get more brown here in the cast iron skillet. And you still have to turn them. Well, you have to, I would think you have to turn them still, even in the oven. Okay, get that baby turn. They are smelling so delish. Maybe you could hold them up so people could see, you know, what's happening. See one? Okay, let's grab a pretty one here. See, we got them. They're getting nice and crispy and brown. Can you cook those medium rare? Nope. Do not cook your meatballs medium rare. You want them cooked all the way through. I may not get, get them exactly all the way through right this second, but they're going to go back in the pan once the sauce is made. But I need some of this fat from the pork and the meat to use for the grease for the sauce that makes it so good. Bread. Banana bread and pizza dough. Cocktails. Good. Hamburgers. These are good. <laughs> Scroll back. Are there any cookies? Yes, Lisa, that's my girl, cookies. So that was well, the number one? No, the number one, we'll start at the bottom. Number 10, I can be David Letterman here. Number 10, most searched recipe since stay at home is cheesecake. So a lot of these are comfort food. You won't be surprised. Cheesecake, number nine, lasagna. Number eight, French toast. Number seven is meatloaf. Number six is crepes, which I thought that was an interesting one. Five is brownies. Four is pizza dough. Jill, you're on it. Pizza dough, which I didn't make my own. I went to Trader Joe's and got mine for our green egg and ham pizzas that we made here on the show. Number three is chicken recipes in general. Number two is pancake recipes, which if you saw my Facebook story yesterday, I made a Dutch baby yesterday on a, on a Facebook story, and um, it turned out kind of cute. It didn't really puff like Dutch babies do, because I use gluten-free flour, but it was delicious. And the number one most searched for recipe since stay at home is, drum roll please, Banana bread. It's banana bread because everyone's bananas are going bad and they're making banana bread. And if my banana bread that we made a few weeks ago, early on, on the show is here, it is the best banana bread recipe ever. And it's um, low-cal and no, sh no sugar if you want to make it with stevia. And it is the best with no oil. So my banana bread recipe is here. You can either scroll way down to banana bread or it's on our YouTube channel, um, Ventura Real Estate. They're easier to search for, I think, there on the YouTube channel. So let me turn these over a little here. 
had a YouTube show up this morning on my feed. How to scramble an egg. How two million views. Wow, two million views? I don't know. I watched it. I think I had it before I watched it. <laughs> wow. Two million views. I think that's Rex's number one dish. Is scrambling eggs. Maybe oh tomorrow God. you can scramble eggs. I can scramble eggs. Well, evidently two million people needed to know how to do that. I would think my audience, though, is a little more sophisticated, and you guys know how to scramble an egg. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> okay, these are getting almost there for our sauce making. And then I will come back and fry the rest of these after you guys are gone from visiting me. So a couple more minutes on those. Big Mama's getting very hot. So I'm going to turn her down a little bit because it is getting very hot. Yum! So we will serve these Swedish meatballs. You can serve them over mashed potatoes. You could serve them over noodles. My mom ser uh, served them always with buttered noodles, which was yum, the big, wide, you know, egg ones. Um, rice, cauliflower rice. You could serve them as a, a lettuce wrap. You could serve them in a lettuce wrap. You could serve them on top of a salad. So pretty much our sliders, you could serve them, I guess, in little sliders. But the sauce is so good that you really want something that is going to, you know, soak up the sauce. So noodles or rice, potatoes would be my suggestions on this. Yummy! Yummy! Okay. Is there a difference between a meatball and a Swedish meatball? I don't know. I guess it's just the way that Swedish meatballs are. I think what makes Swedish meatballs Swedish is the sauce. Isn't it cool? You think it's the sauce? Let's see what she says. Let's see if I can see who's on here. Hey, Lori. Katie, you're there too. Hi, guys. Welcome. Instagrammers, thank you for watching. We're making Swedish meatballs. Oh yeah, Teresa says, try grandma's noodles in the freezer section. They are fat and just like homemade. Ooh, yum! That's what I think Rex is um, still in school. So Rex is not here joining us today for our recipe of the day. He is busy expanding his mind. He's almost out. He may be on recess coming up pretty soon. Recess. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take my meatballs. And I'm going to take them out here while we make sauce. So you can, I'll show you here in a second once I get them out. Okay, your sister. Yes. Said yes. The sauce is made with cream instead of gravy. Oh, okay. Well, we are actually not using cream because I didn't have cream. We are going to be using half and half. Is what we are going to be using. The regular meatballs uses gravy. I'm gonna leave close in a couple of seconds. Let me grab. I actually didn't get the half and half out, so hold on. Gravy. It's always nice to have the Wikipedia of cooking on watching your show live. It just happens to be your sister. Oh yeah. Oh good. Thank you. Yes, my research department is online. Thank you. Yes, cream. We are going to be using half and half because it's what I have and not cream. Hey Lori, how are you? Adriana, thanks for watching. We're making Swedish meatballs, so we're going to make sauce here in a second, but I'm just waiting for these last couple ones to uh, brown up a little bit. It's okay if they're not totally cooked through. I mean, I try to cook, to cook them through all the way, because we're going to put them back in the sauce once we're done here. So I've got the meatballs. I'm going to take those out, and now we're going to make yummy sauce. Yummy! So the first thing I'm going to put in here is butter. Yes! And I am going to put the whole stick of butter in the pan. Yum! Oh, dill. I didn't put dill. You put dill in the meatballs or you put dill in, in the sauce? Dill's not in the recipe. But I can put dill. I, th I, I think I have dill. 
Right now we have butter and I'm going to put some flour in here and whisk it together with our butter and start to make our roux along with the fat that's in the pan. So this is melting. One. I'm going to put six teaspoons because I'm making enough sauce for all the meatballs even though we haven't made all our meatballs yet. I lost count. How many was that? How, anybody counting those? More butter. More butter. <laughs> We'll see. I'll see how it looks here when we get it into roux form. Oh my gosh. We need another camera over here so you guys can see. See if I can, I can pick Big Mama up and show you what's happening. Big Mama very hot and very heavy. Whoops, there you go. This is what's happening here. Roux. What's, what's roux? Roux is flour and butter. And we're making a roux here. It's got its own name. It's got its own name. So we're going to let the flour taste cook out of that while I whisk up our little bits, our little brown bits of yumminess that are in the pan here. Brown bits of yummy. Oh my gosh. Yes! Well, your sister gave away the secret ingredient. Oh, she did? The dill. Oh, the secret? The dill? The dill. So, how much? Oh, just a touch? All right. Well, let's get this. Let's see. Da, da, da. I'm going to stir in the beef broth and the cream and some Worcestershire Shire, Shire, Worcestershire sauce and some mustard. Of course, Grey Poupon. Pardon me, but do you have any Grey Poupon? Yes, we do, and it's going in the sauce. But I'm going to start here with the beef broth. Dill. Okay, well, let me get some dill. I think I have some. Nice to have my research department online. Let's see if I've got Bill. Very she, knowledgeable she is. Very knowledgeable, yes. She is an excellent cook. Our mother did a good job <laughs> teaching us. Hey Erin, how are you? My big winner from yesterday. Winner, win, win, winner. Miss Erin Seiler. Okay. We have got a nice looking brown sauce going on here. Oh my goodness, now I'm going to start in here with our beef broth and whisk it in. As we go, whisk and add, whisk and add here. the whole part because you saw how many meatballs I'm going to end up making. I'm going to end up making at least twice as many as those that's still in the bowl. So we need lots of yummy sauce to go with them. So our um, Dijon, we are going to do three tablespoons of Dijon measured very carefully. Two, three. And then our Worcestershire Shire, Worcestershire. <laughs> okay, um, how much Worcestershire? We're gonna put three tablespoons of this, but I will measure this. So we got one, two, three. Okay, three Worcestershire Shires. And then, I think, salt and pepper to taste. Okay. What's in the allspice? You're going to ask me hard questions now. I don't know. Oh, I'm going to spill it too. Okay, we're going to let our sauce thicken up there for a second. Hey, Nancy. Thank you, green. Green's the color of money, baby. Works very well unless you're in front of a green screen. Yeah, yeah. See, obviously, I'm not faking it out. I'm not in front of a green screen. Or I guess I'd be naked. I don't uh, think it does that. Oh, no. I, I don't know. What's in allspice? I don't know. Is it, is it its own spice? I thought it was always a mixture of a bunch of stuff. Research department? What's the answer? <laughs> What's in the allspice? Only Julia will know the answer to yes. that. Yes. Research department. Chime in here. I was wondering if you could make your own allspice. I 
don't know, probably. You can probably grind anything you want. Because doesn't allspice come in a in a nut like nutmeg does? And you could grate it yourself if you were so inclined. So I'm just putting some pepper in here because I like pepper. Yummy. And then how much dill would I need to put in here, research department? Like half a teaspoon? Is that enough? Well, it's secret. It's secret. Well, yeah, I think it's its own spice. I think it comes like a nut, like nutmeg. But how much dill would you like me to put in our, our creation here? Oh my goodness. It's looking good. Get all of our roux going in there. Oh my gosh. We're going to have some happy recipients of this meal. We will be dropping it off later on today. Doorstep, drop off, Swedish meatballs. Yum! And cream going in. I'm just going to let that, I was going to let that thicken up a bit. Then we're going to put our cream in. And then we're going to put our meatballs back in. And then we've got Swedish meatballs. Yum! Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, da 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 da. We're going to let that thicken up, but I'll put some, I'm going to put two cups that I will measure of the half and half yumminess in here. I'm still waiting for you, research department. Oh, there's the answer on the allspice. You want to read that? It is made from dry berries of a plant known as pigments suze. Suze? Isn't that a, that's an engine name. I'm an engine, so I can say engine. You're not that, that's the wrong tribe though. Oh, no. That's not, not Gary's tribe. Not my tribe. Oh my gosh. I wish you guys could smell our yumminess here, but we have a delicious creation going on right here. And Lisa, I'm just going to let it bubble up a little bit. That's amazing Lisa England knew that. Oh, Lisa, I'm surprised you knew that with such detail. You're so smart. <laughs> Broad range of knowledge. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm waiting to. How much dill do you want me to put in this for the secret spice in the sauce? We're supposed to put it in the sauce or in the meatballs? Because I can do it in the meatballs next time. But this time, we'll just put it in the sauce. Whatever you think. Okay, well, from now on, Lisa England's known as Google. Google. <laughs> okay, Google. Okay, well, we're going to have to go on without the deal. You can go you can Google um, the history of a Swedish meatball, and you'll probably get the IKEA picture pop up since they're paying for the ads. <laughs> they're paying for the SEO on Swedish meatballs since they released their recipe yesterday. IKEA. Yeah. How many of you love IKEA meatballs? I thought they sold furniture. Yeah, but they has. Meatballs. Okay, the half and half's going in. Oh my goodness. If we had a mobile camera, you could see that I'm making art here. I am making marble art in the pan here. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. Don't call me late for dinner. This is beautiful creation I made there. And I will put in a pinch of dill in honor of my mom, since she's the one who loves meatballs. I'm going to put in a pinch. So a pinch of dill's going in as the secret ingredient for my mom, for my sister. Yes, Ikea meat, meat, meatballs. I don't think I've ever had them because we don't go to Ikea much because I don't have the patience to put the furniture t together. So now I'm going to take my meatballs and put them back in the sauce and let them finish cooking. Oh my gosh. Yum. Okay, the dill just changed the whole smell here because I love dill. The other thing I guess you could maybe put in here is tarragon, which I also love, but it would be good too. So these will finish cooking in our yummy, yummy sauce. There we go. If I can pick this thing up without making a total mess, we'll try. Hey, Mickey, how are you? 
Hey, Google had another comment. We're, we're making, go, uh, what's the comment, Google? Actually, based on a recipe, King Charles the 12th brought home from Turkey the Swedish meatballs. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at that heavenly dish. So there you go, Swedish meatballs in all their glory, all done in less than, I think it's 20 minutes, and we have a meal, a yummy one, something new and different in a new way. If you have meatloaf makings, you can make it into meatballs instead. So I will um, do our drawing. If you have liked or commented on any of our cooking videos, uh, we have been here every day at 3 o'clock in April, and we will continue to be here every day in April. Oh, wait, that's only two more days. Um, live at 3, and then we will see what our future schedule brings us, because we have a lot of requests to stay on the air here. So we will see how we're going to work that out, but we will figure that out. Um, but right now, we're going to do the drawing. So our drawing today, for our lucky viewers... No birthday shout-outs? I don't have any birthday shout-outs today, so if it's anyone's birthday, let me know and I'll give you a shout-out. Well, let's, give, let's give another one to Jill. I'll put my fancy hat on. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jill's birthday month, so make sure you say happy birthday to Jill, our number one loyal viewer who's watched every single live live. And I can't wait to go have a fun dinner with her out. And I really, we're going to have her on. We're going to have a special show and have her on because she has a special treat if she'll share her secrets with us. So you'll have to tune in that day. Um, but today our giveaway is the travel beach blanket slash um, picnic blanket. So when we can go out and do those things again, this is a little portable one. You can keep it in your car and be ready for a picnic at a moment's notice. Shouldn't so, that come with a bingo set? A bingo set? <laughs> You mean dominoes? No, beach blanket bingo. Oh, beach blanket bingo. Oh, he's so quick today. Da, 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 da. Um, we are going to draw. So here we go. Our winners, if you have liked or commented, you are in the bowl. The bowl of winners. And I know my Erica girl wants to win it. Erica, Erica, I'm pulling for you, girl. Susan Whelan, winner of the day, Susan Whelan, another loyal, 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 loyal watcher, easy for me to say. Susan Whelan, you are the winner of the day. Make sure you follow her on Bling It Jewelry, her $5 jewelry. It's so fun. She goes live every day during the week. So you can find her on Facebook, Bling It Susan. And our second winner today is Kelly White. Kelly White, you are the winner today. So Kelly and Susan, you are the winners of your picnic blanket, ready for your, whoops, hold on, portable picnic. You are all set. So we have yummy meatballs going here and I'm gonna fry a few more for our lucky recipient of the meal today. And we thank you guys for watching. You can find these videos and the recipes on our YouTube channel at Ventura Real Estate. And if you know anyone thinking about buying or selling or investing in real estate, have them call us because that is our day job. I've been on Zoom calls all day, and then here we are cooking, Zoom call, cooking, Zoom call, cooking. <laughs> but it's so fun. We love it. We love seeing you guys uh, every day. This has been so much fun and delicious. So we will see you at the gym when it opens again. We might have to go to the gym twice a day <laughs> after this, after our Swedish meatballs. And we'll see you here tomorrow, 3 o'clock live, Facebook and Instagram. And we love you guys and thank you for watching and can't wait to see you again tomorrow at 3 o'clock.